Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of our How to Script series, or episode 3 if you start from the very beginning. Now, before we begin today, I'd like to remind you that if you are wanting to get the most out of these episodes, then make sure you actually follow along with me and not just speed watching these on your phone. Because while I appreciate the views, you're probably going to learn a lot less than you would if you actually had Roblox Studio open and are copying along what I'm doing on screen. If I'm going too fast for you, then don't be afraid to pause the video, rewatch sections, or even watch at half speed if you find it easier. This way, you get the most out of the video, and not only that, but I promise you'll enjoy it a lot more too, as that way it'll feel a lot like just a stuffy lecture. Now before we start adding new things to our game, there's one more really important concept we need to learn, and that is variables. So what we're going to do is going to add in a new script, okay, into the workspace. And now, since we've got a few scripts, I'm going to give it a name as well. So it's a good idea to name your script so you don't get them all mixed up. So we'll just call this one variables. And then this other one down here, I think that was for the ball. So we can just name that our, our ball script. Okay. So now we've got an idea of what each one is. And then we're not going to use the print, so we can delete that. And I could also uh, put a message at the top of the script as well. So if you want to ever write a message at the top of your script, you can't just type it normally, this is a message. Because if you did that, it's going to get interpreted as code. And it's going to say, well, I don't know what this means. So instead, what you can do is you can use two dashes. If you put two dashes at the top like that, it will turn green and then the whole message will be ignored. So you can write some code, print hello, and then you can put dashes and you can explain what it is. If you want, you could say this prints to output and so on and so on. But ignoring all that, so this will be our variable script, okay? And then what is a variable? Well, a variable is essentially like a box or a bucket that we can store some information, some data. So if you remember when we had the print command, we could print out the number 10, or we could print out a message, some text, by using those double quotation marks, and then our message. But instead, we could also save this into a variable, okay? So start off, to create a variable, we give it a name. Now, the name can be anything, but it's a good idea to make it descriptive of what it is. So in this case, I'm going to call it my number. My number is the name of it, and then we get a value, so we set it to equals, and then we'll set my number equal to 8. That's a good number, isn't it? And we could add a new line, and then we could say, let's have some text. Now, in programming, uh, text is actually known as something called a string, okay? Because it's a string of characters altogether. So my string equals, and because it's a text or a string, we're going to use those quotation marks. So it's purple, and we'll say, hello there, everyone. So that's my string. And then I could also have something called a object, okay? So my object and that can be equal to something inside the game world, okay, such as this ball over here. So if you remember back in our ball script, we had to refer to workspace.ball.transparency every time we wanted to use it, which was a bit annoying. Instead, in our variable script, we could type something like this, my object equals workspace.ball. Okay, so then if I ever wanted to access the ball again, I could just use this. It's kind of like a nickname, essentially. I could use my object rather than having to type out workspace.ball every time. So there's a few different types of variables. Let's put them into action now. So what we can do is that we can use these with the print command. So we can type print, but then instead of saying hello world inside the quotation marks, we can just put the value of one of our variables. So we could put in my number. And then when we run the game, we should see down the output, we see the number eight. Because what's happening is it's saying print my number, and then it's going to look and see what my number is equal to, and it's equal to eight. We could swap this out for string, and we could get the message. We could see, yep, yeah, it says hello there, everyone. Fantastic. And we could even get the object. We could print out my object dot 
uh, material, for example. So now we're often so now we're referencing, sorry, a property of that object. Now my object doesn't exist in of itself, but remember it's a nickname for workspace.ball, which does exist. Hopefully that makes sense. So now if I run, now we should hopefully see enum.material.pebble. Now don't worry about the enum bit, we'll talk about that later. But for now, yeah, we can see it's outputting pebble, which is super. So we'll stop the game, head back into our variables. And if we really wanted, we can even put multiple things in the print statement. So we could put my number, and then we could want to have my string as well. Instead of adding it, we'd need to use a comma, okay? So a comma, and then we follow it with the next value, which would be my string. And so then we should see in the output the values of each of these, which is eight. And hello there, everyone. And so if we ran that, we should see, yep, there it is, eight. Hello there, everyone. Combining the two values into one print statement. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, let's go back into our ball script now. And then at the top here, we can say ball equals workspace dot ball. And then now we can just reference ball with a lowercase b. And it's a lot easier to just type ball than having to type all of that. So we can paste that in there, 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 and there. And now that's already shortened our script and it's going to be much easier to edit in the future. And if I run the game, it's going to have exactly the same effect as it was before. We've got to wait five seconds and there we go. The ball starts flashing again. Nice one. So let's head back to our script. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of with these variables is you need to define them at the top of the script because remember, scripts run from the top down. So let's just change this to wait one again. And I'm going to now cut my variable and paste it down to the bottom. Okay. And so now when I run the game, we're going to get, oh no, an error. Attempt to index nil with transparency. So what this means is it's saying on line four. So if we stop and we look at line four, that's where we first reference ball. Now it doesn't know what ball means at this point because it hasn't seen this down on line 12 where we've explained what ball is. Because at the moment it's just on line four and it doesn't know what that is. So you've got to make sure you define your variables before you start using them. Straightforward, right? Okay, so that's why you'd want to use an object variable. But what about these other variables over here? Why would we ever want to use a number variable? Surely it's easier just to type eight, right? Well, let me give you an example, okay? So seeing as we've got a football pitch and we're making a sort of football game, we're gonna have two teams, okay? So we can have my team, or we can have uh, team one, say. Team one, and we can give that the name of the team. So maybe the name of the team is uh, Goblins United. And then team two, well, that will be equal to, I don't know, we could have the uh, Elf City, for example, right? And then in our print statement, we could print them out, team one. And then we could say another comma. And this time we maybe put versus. And then we put the second one, team two. So now I'm combining my variables, which are already defined, with some new string. And then if I wanted to use them again, I could say print out again. And then let's say instead of, we we'll copy and paste that. But now instead of versus, we're gonna say how many goals they've got each, okay? So team one, maybe they've scored zero goals, but team two, Elf City, they've managed to score three goals, okay? So it's three nil to Elf City. And so if I then run the game, of course, we should hopefully see that all running. Yep, we've got versus, and then we've got nil and, or three nil. So that's obviously a lot easier is that we can just reuse them rather than having to type all of that out each time. And if we had hundreds of lines of code down here, we wouldn't want to go through and change every instance of it. We could just change it once right at the top. So if we wanted to have a different team playing, we can maybe have the gnome rovers playing. We just change it at the top and then we can take effect to both of those pieces of text. 
the same thing with the numbers. So we could have the uh, team one score variable. We could set that equal to zero. And then we could have the team two score. That would be start off with zero as well. So maybe initially we would have team one score and team two score all down in our print statement. So now, of course, I'm referring to all of these. We're still referring to these variables at the top and we would get exactly what we expect, zero and zero. But let's go back now and then on the next line, maybe the known rovers have scored. So now we would say team one score equals one. We could change its value. And then on the next line, we can print it out again. And so then it should say one nil to the known rovers. Oh, we've got the terrain editor up here for some reason. Close that. So yeah, we've got versus nil nil and then one nil. And then we can also do calculations with these. So instead of just setting it equal to something, we could say team one score equals the team one, oh, sorry, the team one score. And then we could add on another one. So what's happening there then? Well, remember, whenever we say team one score, we're meaning whatever the value of that is. And the value of this currently is one. So this line is saying one equals one plus one. So obviously that's gonna equal two. So now if we print the score line out one more time, hopefully we should see nil nil, one nil, and two nil. Let's run the game and check. And there we go. Nil nil, one nil, and two nil. So you can see that these variables are a lot more powerful when we can start doing these calculations on them. And then maybe Elf City managed to score a goal. So we'd say teams two score equals one. Or maybe we would do it like this. We could say equals team score, team two score plus one. So it'd be zero equals zero plus one, same thing. And then maybe even the gnome rovers, maybe they get a goal disallowed. Maybe it turns out that they cheated and it wasn't actually a fair goal. So then we could say team one score equals team one score minus one. And then we could print out the results again, one final time. And what are the results now? Well, oh, it's all one, one, it's all square. So that's a few ideas of using variables. I'm going to be using these a lot more in all the episodes to come. So hopefully that's got you an idea of how to start using them. And then we can start applying them a bit more into our game world now. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.